Okay, we are inside the Miller Art Museum for our talk today, which is with the Learning and Retirement class, which is through the NWTC program here in Sturgeon Bay. And I will turn it over and you will see a screen. And then we will be having Tina Kukuski, who is the library director, and Elizabeth Meisner Gigstead, who is the Miller Art Museum's executive director, speak about the behind the scenes at 107 South Fourth. Uh, after the presentation, we will be doing um, a tour, or the attendants will be doing a tour. We'll see a little bit of that, but I will also be showing you some of the newspaper clippings and scale models and that sort of thing that um, they will be discussing, so I'll show that to you up close. So I'm going to flip it around, and I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions that come up during this, feel free to post a comment, and I will try and gather the answers to those comments uh, later in the day and respond to you. Thank you so much for watching. Good morning everybody. So glad to have you here this morning in this beautiful space and uh, all of the different things that we'll be seeing. I'm Barbara Bunning and I'm the coordinator for the LIR class today. And the blue evaluation forms that uh, you always get, we will end up back here at the end of the day, and so I'll hand that out, those out there, so that you can sign in. Please turn your cell phones off, and your name tags, leave them on, so that we know. The restroom is, if, when you go out this door and turn left, it's right by the front door where you come in. So if you need to go to the restroom, that would uh, be the place to go. We'll take a short break at some point. Is that okay, or how, how would you like to? Take yeah, a break? we will. Yeah. Okay, do that. And uh, are there any questions? We will be, well, they will tell you what all you're going to be doing. And I'd like to introduce you to Liz Meisner-Gigstead, who is the Miller coordinator and manager and all everything. And uh, Tina Kukowski, who is the head librarian here, and they are the ones who are going to be letting you in on all the information that you came here to hear. So uh, please welcome them, and remember the cell phones, please. We don't want a ding, 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 ding going on, and uh, we look forward to the tour. Thank you. Welcome, learning and retirement members. My name is Tina Kukowski, as you just heard. Director of Dark County Library, and my colleague, Beth Meisner Gigstead, Executive Director of the Miller Art Museum. Thank you for signing up for this course, Behind the Scenes at 107 South Fourth, the library in the Miller. As you can tell, 107 South Fourth Avenue, where you are currently located, is a unique building based on a unique idea. This building houses a public library and museum, which are both free to the public to use. A rather radical idea when it was proposed in the late 1960s, early 1970s, and still a rather radical idea in the 21st century. The combination of a library and a museum occupying the same space and collaborating with each other is a, rarely, is a fairly rare thing compared to a standalone public library and museum. But before we go, we get to how that came about, let's go back a bit in library history. It's not going to be real long. <laughs> At one time, there were no public libraries as we know them in the United States. There were libraries, but those who used them paid a subscription fee to be able to access the contents. Like the library company of Philadelphia, founded in 1731 by Benjamin Franklin, and it was the first subscription library in the Americas. Or, Library users paid tuition fees to be able to use the materials as an academic institution. Or library users were part of a group or a trade and had permission as a member to access the materials collected by that group or trade. These different types of libraries, for the most part, coexisted. However, your average everyday person was not necessarily in a position financially or professionally to have written resources available to them past their years in elementary school, if they even went to school. A major sticking point was, who 
who's going to pay for a library which is free for the public to use? Well, Benjamin Franklin again came forward and donated a collection of books to a town in Massachusetts that named itself after him, and the residents of Franklin voted to make the collection free to use by town members, creating the first public library in the United States, but only for those town members. Other public library milestones include the first totally tax-supported free public library in Peterborough, New Hampshire, in 1833, and the first large public library founded in Boston, 1848, which allowed all Massachusetts residents to borrow from it. But not everyone could borrow from these libraries still. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, the first session of the Wisconsin Territorial Legislature took place in 1836, and a budget was authorized to purchase books for a library, which was part of the Wisconsin State Library. This later became the Wisconsin Law Library. Governor Doty made his personal library available for loan to the public in Madison in 1841. Academic libraries were established in Platteville, at Beloit College, the University of Wisconsin, Lawrence University, and Carroll College, and subscription libraries were established in Madison and Cannesville. Then, in 1872, a law was enacted in Wisconsin authorizing the establishment of free public libraries, and the first public library in Wisconsin was established in Black River Falls of that same year. Today, this building is a historical society. Other libraries were founded in other Wisconsin cities, the earliest including Sparta, Madison, Eau Claire, Fond du Lac, and Milwaukee. And the American Library Association and the Wisconsin Library Association came into being to promote libraries and literacy for the populace. So more public libraries continue to pop up around the state. A major player in the establishment of library buildings around the country came from a philanthropic source. I bet you can guess where that was. Between 1883 and 1920, steel magnate Car Andrew Carnegie provided funding for 1,679 public library buildings in the United States, 63 of which were in Wisconsin, and one of which is in Sturgeon Bay. Libraries in Door County parallel the development of libraries elsewhere in the country. Women's clubs and other groups had small collections of books that were available on a limited basis in several locations throughout the county, and local libraries in Door County evolved over the years. Here's a brief timeline of the local libraries in Door County. A self-service library on Washington Island was started by a local women's club in 1910. <coughs> the Ephraim Library organized in 1929 with a gift collection of 1,200 volumes. The Bailey's Harbor or MacArthur Library was created in 1938. The Sister Bay Library came about in the 1940s and moved into a new building in 2001. The Fish Creek Library started in 1945 as a women's club library in the home of Roy Kinsey. It was moved to other locations, coming to rest finally in the town of Gibraltar Community Center in 1990. The early Egg Harbor Library was operated by a women's club and the branch was added in 1969 and a new building opened last year, 2018. And a new library opened in Forestville in 1981. But what was going on in Sturgeon Bay? A group of 10 men formed the Sturgeon Bay Library Association in 1866, and it was a subscription library open only to the members. Then public library service in Door County at Sturgeon Bay began in 1901, when an association of Sturgeon Bay women established a combination reading room and lunch room, which replaced the Men's Private Library Association. This collection then moved to the LaPlante store in 1905. Then the city of Sturgeon Bay assumed responsible for the library, responsibility for the library in 1906, hiring a librarian and moving the materials to the Finney Building. <coughs> Eventually, a site was donated and a $12,500 grant from the Carnegie Foundation provided funding for permanent housing of the library collection, and the new library building opened in 1913. This building still exists, is located at 354 Michigan Street, and currently houses the Stangle Accounting and Tax Office. The building is on the National Register of Historic Places. This library 
library was used over the years, and in the late 1940s, a new idea for regional library service was attempted as a project between Door and Kiwani counties and the state. All of the Door and Kiwani county libraries contributed their materials and administration to the Door Kiwani Regional Library, but this project was terminated in 1952. Kiwani County pulled out of the project, and Door County Libraries joined together into a single system with a bookmobile. And the public libraries of Door County have since operated within this single system, administered and financed by the county, and known as the Door County Library. At that time, this system included Door County headquarters and seven branches. The library at Sturgeon Gray branch was housed, housed the Door County Library headquarters, and they shared staff, materials, and space. As you can imagine, that space started to be a concern, and storage was getting tight, as no additions had been made to the original Carnegie Building over the years. An addition to the Carnegie Building was proposed, but funding did not go through. So preliminary plans for a new library were started in 1972 with a cost estimate of $600,000. A site for the library was designated by the Sturgeon Bay City Council at the corner of 4th and Nebraska, right here. An architectural firm drew up plans and fundraising started in earnest. A model was made to help with visualization and fundraising. And later on, uh, we have the original model at the back of the room there, so I hope we'll go and take a look at it. It's a little worse for the wear, but it's still there. The fundraising campaign worked on many fronts. The Friends of Door County Libraries mailed appeal letters to Door County residents. Posters were created and distributed by volunteers. Donations were made by children at the schools. Sturgeon Bay High School students made and sold party mugs and sponsored a dance. Informational stories were in the paper. Groups like the Door Drifters Winter Sports Club the Door County Weeders Guild, a homemakers club, the Cherryland Horsemen, school alumni classes, 4-H clubs, service clubs and garden clubs, among others, contributed donations. Corporations like Day Ship gave funds, as did the Peterson Foundation, and the Friends of Door County Libraries and the City of Sturgeon Bay and the County of Door put the final funding together to make the building possible. So, how does the Miller Art Museum fit into this? Fundraising for the building where you are sitting today was not solely limited to those means Tina previously mentioned. Among the varied pillars of support was a substantial gift from the sale of a building donated by Miller Art Museum founder Gerhard Miller, located at 147 North 3rd Avenue, which at the time housed Dorb's Cake Store. Many of you today might recognize it today as Door County's Crater Cantor. In the Thursday, October 24th, 1974 issue of the Door County Advocate, the following was written in an article titled, Library Art Wing, Bargains for Shoestring Budget. There's a brilliant commercial on TV nowadays, a takeoff on the Watergate hearings. A Sam Urbanesque voice questions a grim-faced gentleman about running an information agency made to sound quite sinister. The man being questioned gives out information at government expense to anyone who calls in. Does this organization of yours have a name? The questioner draws on. Yes, sir, the man says without cracking a smile. It's called the public library. <laughs> if there's an award for commercials, that one should win hands down. You could do a similar one about public art galleries. Just think masterpieces of priceless value available to everyone at no charge. I shall never forget my first encounter with the masters when I visited the Chicago Museum. The prints we had studied in grade school were pretty, but the impact of original was indescribable. Here in Door County, we have both these public enrichment institutions in one package. This article goes on to articulate to the public the specifics of how the art wing would operate under the guidance of an art committee and a large group of enthusiastic volunteers. 
Earhart's belief that the arts must be available to everyone, his love of travel, and incredible network of friends led to the reality that we now know as the Miller Art Museum. Earhart and his wife Ruby traveled the world extensively, and on a trip to Venice, Italy, in the early 1970s with friends Marie and Eunice Schlintz, the idea of a public art gallery in the library was born. Recognizing the distinct difference between galleries in Italy that were open to the public year-round and the seasonality of galleries in York County, he saw a window of opportunity for a facility that could provide year-round availability of cultural offerings such as art, music, and written word to students, residents, and visitors alike. Eunice, then a member of the Sturgeon Bay Library Board, and her husband, Murray, thought it was a great idea as well. If ever there was a man to help a community bring its creative spirit to fruition, it was your heart. A great deal of time, thought, and energy was devoted to the development of the Miller from Gerhard and his cadre of business friends. On January 14, 1975, Gerhard and his wife Ruth, who graciously agreed to put forth the funds for financing an art wing, amounting to $50,000, from the sale of his property, along with 1,200 additional donors, were recognized at a Founders Day event. A highlight of this event was the unveiling of a portrait of Gerhard by his friend and celebrated Door County artist, James J. Ingwersen, gifted to the institution and the naming of the art wing to the Miller Art Center. Without question, Gerhard's impact on the institution as we know it, both physically within the walls of the museum as well as the exterior of the building as it pertains to its traditional colonial architecture was great. So how then did the museum operate in its early years and develop into what it is today? The Miller Art Museum was originally established as a branch of the Door County Library System, operating as a committee under the Door County Library Board of Directors. On July 1st, 1974, a fine arts board was established to set policies and supervise the operation of the art gallery. An art acquisitions committee was also established to acquire artwork as it fit into the budget. The now deceased and widely beloved Door County art guru, Charlie Lyons, was appointed as the museum's first curator. At this time, the Fine Arts Committee became a committee of the Friends of the Door County Library, offering greater flexibility for fundraising and general operations than what could be achieved operating under the Door County Library Board. Shortly after the unveiling of the Ruth Morton Miller Mezzanine, stairs, which would provide permanent space for the display of the collection, in June of 1983, the Friends of the Door County Library changed its name to Friends of the Door County Library and Miller Art Center. Shortly thereafter, in 1984, the Millers contributed another $50,000 gift to found the Miller Art Center Foundation, Inc., which would ensure long-range security of the permanent collection and perpetuate the life of the organization. It was felt, given the size of the organization and specific focus of its volunteer members, that a separation would be beneficial for both. More focused programs, ease of handling financial matters, and in general, more efficient operation. Since the Door County Library Board has contracted with the Miller Art Center Foundation, Inc. for curatorial service through an annual purchase of service agreement, the overarching entity of the Miller Art Museum is the Miller Art Center Foundation, Inc., which oversees management of the endowment and is the legal authority. Bylaws were changed in 1993, 
where a separate board of directors was established to oversee the daily operations of the institution. At this time, the Miller Arts Center took the name Miller Art Museum to more accurately reflect its purpose, not only as a cultural institution, but as a collecting institution. The building itself is jointly owned by the County of Door and City of Sturgeon Bay, and the two governments share costs for maintenance staff and utilities. We inhabit the building with the library staff and visitors and maintain a positive working relationship showing great respect, collaboration, and cooperation with that community. At 5,000 square feet, the Miller is 20% of the total library building. In 1995, a three-story addition was completed, that's the Bath House and Museum, which we'll see shortly, doubling the exhibition space, museum store, and curatorial storage. Currently, the Miller maintains a nine-member board of directors, substantiated by committees, paid staff, and a large core of volunteers. The library director, Tina, maintains a non-voting seat on our board of directors, and the Miller director, Courtney, has a non-voting seat on the library. you a greatly abbreviated version history of the library in the Miller. Here's some facts and figures. The original building started construction in 1973, occupation at the end of 1974, and dedicated in January 1975. With the addition to the Miller, total square footage for the building is 32,600 square feet. The lot is approximately 30,000 square feet from the southwest side of the intersection of Fourth Avenue and Nebraska Street. There are two floors and a basement space. The Door County Library headquarters is housed in the rear portion of the building. And there are four meeting spaces, three conference rooms on the second level, and one large meeting space in the basement. The library includes the Lori History Room, where Door County historical information is stored. But what the facts and figures don't tell us is how this unique building is being used. Currently, the building at 107 South Fort is a vibrant shared space. Here's an idea of what is happening in this space. A diverse array of library and museum programs from meetings, presentations, movie and film screenings, the ever popular story hour, legislative listening sessions, voter information programs, tutoring, lively gallery openings, music performances, lectures, receptions, recitals, docent-led exhibition tours for students, special groups, and adults, visiting artists and exhibition lectures in addition to the community using uh, the internet, finding books and magazines to read, downloading books and films, using informational electronic databases, and much more. Truly, we are a cultural destination and an important resource for our Door County community. We're gonna take a little break here and give you a chance to look at some of the items that we have, some of the artifacts. Plus, we will tour the building right after that. So let's put up the tour of the building slide. Take a break, and then we'll all gather right here in about five or so minutes, and we'll tour the building. There is coffee, water, and goodies at the back of the museum, so if you're interested, please help yourself. So that was the talking portion of the um, speech today. And I'm going to show you some of the materials that they just spoke of so that you can take a peek at uh, some of the history. So I'll try to get out of the light there. That is a photograph of the model that we will take a look at shortly and that is of the <coughs> building that is currently housing the Sturgeon Bay Library. You can see here that in the back this is where the addition went on and so that is different today than what is current. And 
but I doubt it. We do have that still today. You do? Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat. Yep, but we can't go out on it, oh. unfortunately. Yeah, because I was I thinking know. it's a safety issue. It, it, it's some some with the tar paper or something like that. Oh. But we all, we all teased that when they redid the roof that maybe we could, you know, yeah. have that. <laughs> but it didn't work out. Is this wall still here or did they add on? Is this where they added That's on? where they added on. So um, when you see the back um, in the tour, she'll show you that this, this space is oh. always an interesting conundrum for for placing art and such. Uh. And so they've done a few different things where they've... Well, this space is that... Room right there? Correct. Uh, Correct. So. They put a second floor on here too or no? Um, yes. Yes. So I believe, I believe this goes completely flush now. Okay. Yeah. So here is the front of the model. I remember when a lot of that happened, but... I didn't know the years, and yeah. so it was right. nice to hear yeah. the, the proper sequence mm -hmm. of all that. Yeah. 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 And then we'll take a peek at some of the books over here. I don't know where she's from. How are you doing, Morgan? I'm doing well. Yeah. Still How are you? Here, I see. I'm here. <laughs> it's been 14 months now. So, You've been here 14 months? Yeah, yeah. So time flies. Yeah. Some of the magazine clippings. Or newspaper clippings, I should say. Isn't it awesome to see these? Articles in the paper from the Advocate back I know. in the day when it was a paper. I know, I know. It was a little bit of editorial in some of it. You know, you can see uh, Chan Harris pushing issues and good projects like this one. Yeah. These are some of the high school exhibitions. Looks like. <clears throat> A more expensive camera? Or? Well, this is I'm doing Facebook Live. Oh, you're doing Facebook Live? Yeah, yeah. No, and we have to use we have to use our uh, library resources for that sort of thing. You have your own library resources? We do. We have a video camera and that sort of thing, but otherwise I use my cell phone to take the pictures and stuff, so, you know. So easy. It, it is. And then you can get it up onto social media so easily. Yes. So these pages are quite a bit larger, so I'll just panel down a few of them. Well, they're here to help. Yeah. 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 
nice little pocket sleeves for things. You can see that is this piece folded up. That was delivered. And this is the model we just saw. Looking through some of the newspaper clippings brought together by the friends of the Door County Library. We are going to be leaving the Facebook okay, Live. On that note, I'm going to if you would like to have a tour to of our facilities here, you can always come in and, and ask for one, and we would be happy to arrange that if you would like a personal tour and um, or look for additional programs such as this one to be occurring in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed this talk, and um, I look forward to answering your questions.